7.6 is about random numbers, and on a computer, random numbers are only pseudo-random, but for our purposes, that's good enough, so I'm going to skip all this stuff about the difference between pseudo-random and actual random. So, we already looked at the random uh, number generator before, and the two lines you need for random generator, random you can call it whatever you want, but it's new random, and then the next int is the method we're going to use. And let's go ahead and grab this entire uh, chunk of code. It's a method, public static. It's going to return an integer array. Alt Shift F. All right. So what's the problem here? We have to import Java Util Random. And again, when you import, if you look at this, we got arrays and random in here. And there's a fast way to do this, to get everything in the util library. You put a star, it'll grab everything in the Java util library. And that's very common uh, to do that and shortcut, because there may be a third thing you need in the util folder soon, or in the util library. <clears throat> okay, so that will run a random array. What does this do? We got a new random object. We make a new integer, and what size will it be? Well, whatever int value we passed in, and it's going to run a for loop, same uh, structure we always use, 0, less than length, i++, plus plus. and again, i like the plus plus i. It's going to make a new integer. This goes between 0 and 99. Uh, if you want to go between 1 and 100, you would do 1 plus, uh, but we're computer scientists, so we'll go 0 to 99. And it's going to return uh, A. So it's going to fill it up one element at a time at position I. And that's going to go from 0 to length and fill it up. And that's going to return A at the end. All right. Let's comment that. All right. This array to string is quite a lot to type. So we're going to right highlight the whole array to string, right click, refactor. I'm going to rename it. I'm just going to call it toString. Now that should uh, redo. Oh, copy doesn't exist anymore. Uh, that should redo the name for the method and all of the occurrences. So if you put the cursor here, it should highlight in yellow all things it's going to replace. You can hold down Alt and scroll. Uh, you can't really read it, but you can see that it's yellow everywhere it appears. So again, I'm holding down Alt and uh, scrolling. All right, I don't really care about the sum anymore. All right, so we've made an array here. Let's go int, I'll just call it R equals, I'm going to make a random array. What's random array do? Well, again, we just looked over. It's going to make a new integer array, fill it up with stuff, and then return it. And I want to print out r equals this array. All right, there we go. We're going to run it several times, and you're going to see a whole bunch of different values come out. OK. Wouldn't it be nice, maybe we want a random length array. What we're going to do is use the method we already have. Uh, now this is not okay to do what I did here, which is we have two arrays with the same name taking both uh, the same arguments or same parameters. So I'm not going to ask for a size. I'm going to return random array and now if I delete this now it's going to call random array and it's going to make array of 50 quite a lot and uh, you need to scroll way over to see that there is some way here you can word wrap word wrap there you go sometimes you may want to word wrap sometimes you may not I'll, I'll leave it wrapped for now uh, what I'd like to do
So this will give me a random length. So I'm going to make a random array using a random length. And if I run it different times, you're going to see, yes, there's random numbers, and there's different numbers of random numbers. I'm just hitting F6 over and over again. Oh, you can get crazy and do 1,000. Uh, better scroll out if you're going to want to see them all. So I'll just keep rerunning it. Uh, so just to warn you, this is where you can start giving your computer serious problems. Let's get a little crazy. You may not want to try this on your machine. It's going to take a bit longer to run, but you're, you can start to get crazy uh, sets of numbers. They're going to take a while to scroll up and down. Uh, so I don't recommend you generally play with numbers that big. You know, of course, there's nothing preventing you from doing something like this. Uh, I don't really want to, well, there is a limit to how big an int can get, which I don't want to talk about that either. You can run it with huge numbers, but I recommend you resist the temptation. I think 10,000 is, is a good, it's, it's a lot without uh, overburdening most computers. So I wouldn't go past 10,000, and most things can be done at a size of 1,000 to get a good idea of what's happening. Uh, if you want and you have a nice machine and you have some free time, you can definitely change that value to something a lot bigger.